Hey kids, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math, grade five. It is module two and it's lesson 14, homework. And I just have to tell you, you should not be watching this as your first video. You should go watch the problem set video first. Really pay attention to the notes. That video is so great for helping you understand this concept and then how to apply this little formula that we're gonna be using here and how to use the fractions and what the fractions mean. I'm telling you that video is great. Go watch it first before you do this. Also, this homework should be done. You should have already completed the homework, giving it your best effort. Watching the video and doing the homework together, less effective. You should have a chance to struggle with this work before just copying down the answers. This should be more of a check than a copy, okay? Because you have to engage that brain of yours. Now the directions say, oh sorry, the objective says at the bottom of the page as usual, use fraction and decimal multiplication to express equivalent measurements. It's always there. You should always recognize that, hey, the objective is what I need to know at the end of each lesson. And so um, also in the problem set video, I'm talking to you guys about how to use the fractions, how to multiply, and how this is like kind of our first experience working with fractions and what they mean. So it's really very helpful. Go watch that first. Anyway, if you're already done, let's get into this one. Solve. The first one is done for you. Let's talk about what it means. We're going to convert things. Today, we are converting in lesson 14 a unit of something that's smaller into something bigger. That's why we're using fractions, because when we change from bigger to smaller units, we end up with more, which is why it's so easy to multiply with whole numbers, but multiplying with fractions is gonna be that piece of something. So when we have something small and we go to something bigger, we should end up with something less than what we started with. For example, 42 days, that's a lot of days, but six weeks, that's a smaller number. But it's just, it's the same amount of time. It's just a different label. We keep talking about the label. So uh, if you don't understand this, go watch the problem set video because we're going to start using our formula for B. Convert quarts to gallons. Now you should know that there are four quarts in a gallon, so a gallon is bigger. And so we're going to take this 36 quarts and we're going to copy the number multiply by one of the old unit, and then this is where you swap out the unit for unit. So it's gonna be instead of a quart, what is the new unit equivalent to a quart? Well, a quart is a fourth of a gallon. So that's why we have the fraction. Again, you copy this number down. So you copy it here, and then you bring it down so that you have your factor to multiply by. Now, the next step is to multiply the whole number by the fraction. If it helps you, you can put this whole number over 1 so that you multiply across the top and the bottom, which gives you 36 over 4. And in the problem set video, I talk about how this is a division problem. So 36 divided by 4 is 9, and that's your final answer. And so now they're going to take the scaffolding away little by little. So here we are in C with metrics, convert centimeters to meters. Always have your King Henry chart handy, by the way. Uh, it will really help you. So you take your whole number and you're gonna multiply the 760 by one of the old unit. Then you move this down, repeat it, and here's where you have to really think. One centimeter is what equivalent of a meter. Okay, so you should know, and also if you need to refer, if you go back to page 73, it's just a couple turns back, this is a meter stick on paper. If you cut out, you can pull out this page, there's nothing on the back of it. You can pull it out and tape the ends together and you will have your own meter stick. And I'm always talking about using, you know, realia, using a meter stick, using paper, or having something. It will help you to actually see that there are 100 centimeters in a meter, so one centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter, which gives us 760 over 100, which would be the next step. Another thing you can also do for one one hundredth is to use a decimal. Um, they do say in the objective that you can use decimals and fractions. 
uh, fraction and decimal multiplication. And so if you have your 760 divided by 100, then your final answer, remember when you divide by 10, 100, or 1,000, you're shifting the digits to the right because we're taking a piece of it. It's going to be two shifts, which would take the 7 from the hundreds place and go 1, 2, so that it's 7 in the ones place. You can't forget about the 6, so they move together and shift to lower place value positions, leaving you with 7.6 meters. So this is the final answer. If you wanted to set it up, with 760 times 0 0.01, because this is more comfortable for you, you'll get the same answer as this. Okay, so this is your final answer. Convert meters to kilometers. Again, metric, and we're going from the ones place to the thousands place. So you take this, 2485, multiply by one of the old unit, 2485 times, and here they have the decimal value. So if you said this properly, you would say 1 1,000th. One and if you wanted to multiply 2485 in fraction form, you would have 2485 over 1,000. And so if you multiply this by the decimal, you're doing the same thing as dividing by this whole number, okay? This is the same as dividing by this. You're basically shifting three times to smaller place value positions. One, two, three. 2.485, okay? Shifting three positions to lower values, 2.485. If you like the, the using the decimal, then you take the decimal and you go one, two, three, and plop it in. Okay, for E, we've got grams to kilograms. Uh, 3,090, they've removed your scaffolding. That's okay. It's just filling in the blanks. Remember, you can put your own blanks. 3,090 times one of the old unit. Copy the number 3090 times the equivalent of the new. This is where you have to make the change. It's grams from the units or the ones place to kilograms. Remember that kilo is the thousands place. So it's a thousand times bigger than this one. So what is one gram? It's one one thousandth of or one one thousandth of. So then you do your dividing by a thousand or multiplying by the decimal fraction and you have three shifts one two three three point zero nine some kids will say i want to put the zero there and i'll say that's fine you can have it you don't have to have it but what you do have to have is your label kilograms three point zero nine kilograms you can have the zero or you cannot have the zero it's all the same thing and this last one in the corner, convert milliliters to liters, going from tiny to big. Again, copy the number, 205, multiply by one of the old unit, ML. Copy the number, multiply by the equivalent of the new, a milliliter is three positions to the right of the ones, so it's one one thousandth, one milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. You can also say it's one one thousandth. Okay, same thing. Then you do your divide by a thousand or multiply by your decimal fraction. So it's going to be three shifts from the hundreds place. One, two, three. So you're going to end up with the two in the tenths place. Move all the digits in a row. Shift, shift, shift three times with your new label. Okay, all right, I hope you're catching on. It's really just like most of math is finding a pattern. Identify the pattern and then use it. Okay, new, new directions. After solving, write a statement to express each conversion. The first one is done for you. After solving, do more work that shows that you already did the work. Okay. So the screen measures 36 inches, convert 36 inches to feet. Here's your inches, copy the number. Here's one of the old. Here's the conversion. 
copy the number down. Multiply by the fraction. So 36 times 1, 1 times 12. So you multiply across to get 36 twelfths, which is a division problem. Then you have your answer with your label and your statement. So that's what we're doing. A jug of juice holds 8 cups. Convert 8 cups to pints. Here's your old equals how many pints. So we're going to take our 8 times 1 cup, one of the old. That equals 8 times what is the equivalent of a cup to pints. And again, like a I don't know, we usually do like gallon man, and so we'll have created our little, you know, cups, and then our pint, so we have two cups, and that's your pint, and then our quart, and then that's the two pints, and it's four cups, and so we've usually done this by now, so um, students will have access to that, and then I'll just finish this off right here, so it's going to be four quarts in a gallon. That's essentially what it is, but it would finish out with all the cups so that everybody can kind of see. And we do different colors for the pints, so you can see that this is a pint here, and this is a pint here, and this is a pint here, and anyway, it goes all the way across, and we have all the things. And it's really helpful, and you should have that in front of you the whole time when you're talking about American standard units of measure and not metric because this one is a little odd and metrics are always so easy because it's 1 to 10 to 100 to 1,000. So anyway, here we are back at our one cup equals how many pints? Well, you should know that a cup is a half pint. And then you can take your 8 times the 1. And if you want to put that over the whole number, remembering that um, 8 over 1 is equal to 8. And so then you multiply across and you would get 8 over 2. 8 times 1 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2. And then you divide and get four pints. And so this is your, uh, your answer. We do have to write our super fun statement. We love doing all this extra work because it's fun. A jug of juice holds eight cups, convert eight cups to pints. Let's say eight cups is also four pints. Okay, that's good enough for that one. Um, and so let's move on. The length of a flower garden is 529 centimeters. What is its length in meters? So we're going to take our 529 cm equals how many meters? And then fill in. Notice that I always kind of give myself more room over here. 529 times 1 of the old. 529 times the equivalent of this new unit, one centimeter, use your meter stick, is one one hundredth of a meter. You can use decimals if you want, one one hundredth. You can multiply by that if you prefer. Uh, you can have your 529 over 100 or multiply by the decimal fraction, 0 0.01. It is going to be two shifts. So take your five in the hundreds place and the two in the tens and the nine in the ones and it's going to go shift, shift, two positions, ending up with the 5.29, five in the ones place with the new label because we're changing to meters. And then we have our, our statement, the length of the flower garden. Let's just say the length of the garden is 529 centimeters, which is also 5.29 meters. See how metrics is always so easy? Look at that tie-in, 5.29 versus 529. Same numbers, it's not all like eight and four and two and 16 and one and one eighth and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, sorry, I digress, okay. The capacity of a container is 2,060 milliliters. Old unit. Convert this to liters. New unit. Got to figure that out. Move it over. 2060 times one of the old. 2060 times the equivalent of the new when you're going from milliliters, which is the super tiniest M on the far right side of the King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. That's the milk. 
and we need to get to the units, which is the unexpectedly. So it's three positions to the left, so it's one one thousandth with your new label. Multiply across, get 2060 divided by a thousand, three position shift, 2.060, and again, this one is kind of irrelevant. You don't have to have it. Don't forget your label. Write your statement. The capacity of the container, blah, 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 is 2,060 milliliters, which is also 2.06. You can write the zero if you want. Don't have to have it. Liters. Circle your statement and move on. I sure hope these videos are helpful. If they are, click subscribe and come back again. Anytime you need help, check in and see if I have a video for it. Okay, a hippopotamus weighs 1,560,000 grams. And at this point, I would say, don't use grams to weigh a hippopotamus. That's kind of ridiculous. This is not the right tool. Anyway, convert the hippopotamus's weight to kilograms, which would be a more appropriate tool. So take your 1,560,000 grams and say how many kg. Move this 1,560 times one of the old. Isn't it fun to write big numbers? 1,560,000 times. And then remember, this is a thousand times of the units. If this is grams, that's units. So it's one one thousandth of a kilogram, which means I get to divide this by a thousand. <clears throat> that's a lot of writing. And since I'm dividing a whole number by a whole number with the three zeros, bam, 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 it's going to be 1560 divided by one, which is 1560 kilograms. And our statement is a hippo, I am not writing the whole thing, weighs 1,560,000 grams, which is 1,560 kilograms. There you go. And the last one, hooray, see, not too bad. The distance was 372,060 meters. The distance where? Where are we going? Convert the distance to kilometers. 372060 meters equals how many dark kilometers? There we go. Move it over to here and do what we just did with this huge number. Do it again. 372060 times one of the old. 372.060 times the equivalent of the new. Remember that meters are in the ones place. Kilometers are in the thousands. So one meter is one one thousandth of a kilometer. And then we have this big number divided by a thousand which moves the decimal three places to the left. It shifts the digits three places to the right. So Regardless of how you want to think about it, we're going to end up with 372.06 of the new label kilometers. And then we have to write our statement and we're done. So the distance to nowhere is 372,060 meters, which is also... Three seven two point zero six. No need to have that last zero on there. That's kilometers. Squeeze it in on that curved book, and that's the end. And I hope that was helpful, and I hope you guys understand this concept. Come back again for the next one. Bye for now.